Hey there, and welcome to the second episode of the Make Art, Don't Starve podcast. I'm your host, Kelsey. And I'm your other host, Al, and today we're going to talk about how to get better as an artist. But before we do that, I want to say thanks to everyone who has watched and subscribed and commented and just engaged with the first episode. It took me six months to reach my first 100 subscribers and we got that in the very first video that we ever posted so thank you so much i am so so excited to see where this podcast leads and what ends up happening and i want to say thank you for following us for following us along on the journey yeah the support has been it insane really like i cannot overstate like how grateful i mean we both are but i'm just so so grateful i did not think that like within the first few days we would get to where we are I really thought that it was, you know, I was I was prepared to like totally overhype, like get myself overexcited, <laughs> and that didn't happen. I expectations have been exceeded. So thank you guys so so. Yeah, much. and if you want, you can make guesses as to when you think that we will reach our first 1,000 subscribers in the comments below. And if you are accurate, maybe we'll uh, highlight you in the comment highlight section yeah. of this podcast. Yeah, we've got our guesses in. I hope I'm We right. do, we do. We have... So I, I win We do be. have predictions. We do have predictions. Yeah. But back to becoming a better artist. For me, skill development is vital, not just for like my art skills and oil painting and everything, but I also want to become a better content creator as someone who's looking to grow online and actually make this my career. And making videos and being a good content creator is kind of vital for that. So for me, like skill development is so much more all-encompassing than just being better at than just getting better at drawing heads. Do you know what I mean? Does that make sense? Yeah, for sure. It's especially like when these are so intertwined as our job, our job is being an artist and making content around our art and our art being the content and it's all so intermingled. Yeah. Skill development and becoming better as an artist is not just becoming better as an artist, it's becoming better as an artist, content creator, content creator, artist. It's super like intertwined and you have to like think about everything all the and time. And it's so all encompassing. Like sometimes I feel like the real art that I create is actually the video itself and not the product in my sketchbook. Like, and it, there's, there's right. so many blurred lines when it comes to like what is actually the craft involved here. And um, for me, that's really exciting. And I really like making my videos like really cinematic and filmic. And like, I like t taking time with like the editing and making it really creative. Um, and that's the part that I really enjoy. But for a lot of people, like the content creation aspect will always be secondary and sort of a means to an end. And their focus is going to mm -hmm. be like developing skills as an artist. I think that's sort of true for you, right? right. Like your content's like really casual. Uh, you're really laid back and sort mm -hmm. of that, the content creation <laughs> aspect is like secondary. Like it's like a means to an end basically. Yeah, exactly. I very, very, like there are definitely pieces that have been made specifically because I want to do a certain video, but a lot of times videos are made around the art piece. I, not that I, I do such big art pieces that like, you know, if it, like sometimes people will do something that's so big that like they won't put out videos for a long time because they're working on one specific piece. I definitely make pieces with the intention of making my content, but I'm not super worried about making like a gorgeous video. I'm more worried about like making good art um which is yeah i i don't do my own editing so for me that's not super the part that i'm super artistically inclined towards but um like you know your videos and other people's videos who have like that really good thoughtful editing um where it's more like like cinematic that's definitely like art you can see like the effort that's put into it and it's i think it's super impressive yeah thank you um so one thing that i did actually want to talk about is sort of not boxing yourself in as a creator, and I think this is true for like videos too, like when you set the expectation of like really casual content or really highly produced content, your audience grows to expect that from you. And it can feel really limiting if you wanna branch out and try something new and sort of explore and allow yourself to develop those skills. Um, so I could see like, you know, like if you really niche yourself super hard as like an oil painting artist and you build up this huge following just around oil painting and then you want to try something completely different like acrylics or like the um the cool like alcohol ink abstract art that's out there or like acrylic pouring for example that your audience might not transfer with you to that new interest and so i think it's important if you are sort of inclined to branch out and try new things that you make that very clear in your content that you are sort of a person that likes to explore so you don't set that expectation that you can't really fulfill or that you will eventually subvert for sure i think that absolutely and i think that goes from super narrow to super broad 
like when I if setting out a video, I mean, we talked about this and you're going to get to this later, but putting out a video once a week, it sets that expectation. Like if I don't put out a video, my channel stats will go yeah. down and that can be super, super exhausting to do a full piece of art every week. And there will be times that I don't really do that. And I'll every once in a while, I'll get a comment being like, do, do what you did before. We want to see your art before, like do your art, do your art. And it's like, I, I can't do that every week sometimes. That's super exhausting. And so if I try to branch out into something like book videos, cause I really am into like books and reading, um, those videos do really, really badly because it's not part of my niche. And so I think if you're looking to do art YouTube or be an artist online or have this kind of career, and I mean, the algorithm exists on every social media platform. So not just as, as a YouTuber, but as an artist online, you really need to think ahead about like giving yourself that wiggle yeah. room, so, you know, all the way to this broad aspect of like, if even just every once in a while you want to put out something else, you should make that clear from the beginning. Um, and, you know, try to sprinkle it in every now and then just to keep yourself from being really pigeonholed because that can be super, super like damaging to you and to your art and to your career. It's exhausting. Yeah, absolutely. I'm sort of doing this right now where I've been posting a video every single week for, for a long time, occasionally taking breaks when I really have to. And there's a lot of pressure on like sort of, it, and it's good, it's good for accountability, like having that, like, you know, that expectation that you're going to post every single week. But at sure. least like in my case, I've grown to a point where like, I, in my mind, I have to post a video every single week. And so sometimes I don't post the best video every single week or like the one that I'm the most proud of. And I'm getting to a point where I'm thinking about scaling back my upload schedule so that I can post videos that I am really, really proud of and take my time. Cause I am that kind of person that likes to be more creative in the edit. And I wanna make my videos eventually to be like really high quality production, like almost short film kinds of things, where there's like lots of shot variety, where there's lots of really creative editing. I wanna try like anamorphic and fisheye lenses, for example. Um, and those are kind of like expensive gear that I rely on Patreon to help me fund. And sort of that like idea of creating a sustainable work-life balance is like really baked in to how you brand yourself as a creator. Right. And sometimes, the expectation of needing to post really often to grow online limits your skill set, like because you have to upload, sure. so you have to play it safe, and you can't really experiment as much. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So I, th I think not getting yourself into that niche from the very get go. Yeah. Thinking about this from the beginning, not letting yourself only do acrylic or only do marker or whatever, really is going to benefit you like all the way down the line because like like it you if you're putting out a video every week you can only maybe put in like two hours into your art piece whereas maybe you want to start getting into bigger things you don't have the time for that because because the algorithm tells you no or like on instagram i look back at like my art and i used to do a lot of different stuff and i think i still do but a lot of times i'll look at my art and think like it all looks the same because for a while without even realizing it the algorithm on on Instagram, certain posts did well, and it would narrow me down into only doing portraits and only doing marker yeah. and only doing these very specific things. And before I knew it, that was literally all I knew how to do. I couldn't even like do other things because those skills had, were so lacking. I hadn't practiced for so long. And so really being aware of kind of what you're letting the algorithm tell you to do is really, really important in skill development, not thinking about like, well, what's gonna get me the most likes? Sometimes that isn't as important as just doing what you wanna do. Because that's, you know, if you if you let the algorithm tell you what to do before you know it, you only know how to do one thing. Right. And the last thing that you want to do is to have the, your social media following and the algorithm and, like, your content prevent you from being the best artist that you can be. Because mm -hmm. at the end of the day, like, you are building this following to support your creative practice, not to hinder you and to make you stall where you are. And that's, I think, right. where it comes into play, like seeing that expectation with your audience of being the kind of person that will take breaks, that will experiment, that will like be okay seeing, like that will be okay with being seen in a, in a state of like discomfort or in a state of like a beginner level. Um, Cause I sort of, I always like, I'm a little bit hesitant to show myself on camera doing things that I'm bad at because I want to be seen as a professional artist and I'm afraid that if I get if I get seen as like in that beginner stage people won't take me as seriously. Right. For sure. That's always really like 
it's this weird mental thing because I mean, I know for me on my videos, I always like to say like, I'm not a professional. Like I didn't go to art school. Like I don't have real technical knowledge. Like I, I would consider myself a professional artist in this, but at the same time, I consider myself a very casual artist. I don't know a lot of stuff. I, I just learn from experience and I want to make that clear to people because I don't want people to think that I am telling them what to do or that I am an authority figure. At the same time, I want to be seen as an authority yeah. figure. <laughs> I want people to trust my, my opinions and I want people to, you know, not necessarily look up to me. I don't want people to look up to me, but um, I want people to see me as someone that they can trust and um, someone that they can learn from potentially. And it's a weird balance to keep of like not wanting to be honest, but at the same time, like I don't want to show myself being bad at something and then people think, well, like, she doesn't know what she's talking about at all. So why would I watch any of her videos? Why would I trust her at all? And it's this really weird, like, I don't want to be bad at things. I don't want people to see me bad right. at things. Right, but then, like, you also want to show, like, vulnerability and, like, sort of right. the the inevitable, like, ebbs and flows of developing your skill set as a working yes. artist. Because I think, like, there is, like, an S-curve to um to developing your skill set as an artist where sometimes the the two the two curves so i'll put i'll put a graph up on the screen right now for those of you uh watching the podcast on youtube but for those of you listening on spotify or apple podcasts which by the way thank you um consider rating us if you would please pretty 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 please um the curve basically (laughs) looks like an s and there are two there are two s lines sometimes like your your skill set will be below your ability to see or your taste as an artist. So you'll think your art's really bad because you can like point at all the flaws. You can see everywhere that you went wrong. At other times, the points will converge. So the lines will converge and you'll think that your art is really good and you can sort of accurately assess it because your skill level and your taste as an artist are at the same level. And then sometimes your skill level will be above your taste. You'll think your art is like even better than it was before. And it sort of, it continually moves in this S graph. There is no point in which you will be perpetually satisfied with where you are as an artist because you are always going to continue to develop your taste and your skill set. So there's never going to be a point where you are just like, okay, this is it. I've made it. I'm done. Like I've made my magnum opus. Every work from here on out will be my magnum opus. And there's like nothing left for me to learn. That's never going to happen. Yeah. I think that's super important. I, I want to edit something I said before. <laughs> I don't want people to think that I'm bad. I don't want people to think that I'm bad, but in the same way that you just talked about, there's, there's, you know, an ebb and flow to everything. We are going to be bad. There are times that we will be bad at things. There are times that you're going to try something new and you're going to be bad at it. There's going to be times that you are, are learning and you, you fail sometimes. And there will never be a time that you will be fully satisfied with your art. There will never be a time, no matter how old you are, no matter how long you've practiced, that you're done growing and learning and that you, everything you do will be good. You will still fail sometimes, no matter your skill level, no matter how long you've been doing it. There will be times that you fail. And that's something that I think is super, super important to know. And for people who are scared to try new things and scared to develop their art any further, like failure is always part of the process. And if that's what's holding you back, it, you, it shouldn't be because it's even if you stick with it, the only thing that you know how to do, you're going to fail at that sometimes. And I think that's something that's really like not shown on social media, you know, social media in the, in the same way that we talk about like influencers with their bodies, teaching, you know, young girls that they need to have perfect bodies. Artists do the same thing with only showing their good art and only showing their masterpieces. And I see a lot of young artists thinking that like, if you know, you're not good until everything you do is good. You're not a real artist until every you're cranking out masterpieces every day, but that's just not true. Yeah. Like there are plenty of things that I do that are really, I think that are oh, bad yeah. that I, that I mess up. And there are skills that I don't know yet. And there's plenty of things to learn. And I think that's super, super important to know. Yeah. And that's sort of where I'm at, I think, in my own content. Like, I, I want people to see me fail because I want to perpetuate a culture where it is okay to do that. And I think, like, sure. that, that, like that, that lofty goal for me sort of exceeds my discomfort of showing it on camera. Like, it, it is more important than yeah. that. And so that's why... That's why I think I do that. I think I'm okay with fielding questions that arise mm-hmm. as a result because, like, I'm trying to create that culture. And my community is still, like, fairly small yes. and intimate. But I think I, I want to carry that as I grow. And I want to inspire other people that are just coming up to, to do that same thing. Um, yeah. So, yeah. Yeah, I, th- I think a, a, the best way of putting it is that I'm, I'm okay with people seeing me fail. I don't want them to think I'm a bad artist because mm-hmm. of it. I think that's kind of the best way to put it. And 
and coming from talking about all of that and how it relates to us being creators in general as an artist in terms of developing your skill trying new things is a key key part Absolutely. of it even if you only want to do oil painting for the rest of your life doing other skills is super 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 important and I think like for me I like to dabble in a lot of things um, and I think that is one of the, the biggest ways to develop your skills across the board is not being afraid of trying new things and branching out and stuff yeah I think I have so many things that I want to try um I just got all yeah. of this stuff for needle felting actually let me let me show you um I made I made this little mushroom um I made I, I oh made this like, and it just I just stabbed a needle into this repeatedly and and it's like a little mushroom um, for those of you it's so listening cute. to this, it, it is, it, she's right, it is really cute. Um, but, <laughs> oh my god, it make looks it so, you did a really good ornament. job. Um, and I think, I think it's, it's adorable. And I want to like sell these or something at some point, like maybe. Um, yes. But I got a bunch of, bunch of wool and I just like sat there and did this and it was a really nice break from doing all of the other stuff that I've been doing recently. And I think every single medium that you try will require new things of you. Like yes. going from gouache to oil painting is a very different experience. Like every medium requires <laughs> different approaches. Al will definitely be able to speak to this. Um, and I think it's just, it's important <laughs> to try lots of things to sort of flex those creative muscles so that mm -hmm. you don't get too stuck in any specific sort of techniques or ways of doing things. Yeah. I recently, I did a video um, a while back and someone, I did it, it was a Q&A. Someone asked a question like, what do you do when you what was it it was something like i you know when you are kind of sick of a of a medium and you don't use it anymore like what do you do and that question kind of surprised me because i was like I don't, I don't do anything like that doesn't bother me if i if i don't want to use a specific medium sometimes i'm a little sad like I, if i invest a bunch of money into markers i recently went through a phase where i wasn't using markers and i was like well i spent i've spent so much money on these markers you know it sucks that i don't use them but like I know I will again. Like we are we are artists for a long time. We live for a long yeah. time. We have plenty of time to not use things and use new things. And it's it's silly to think that we will be using the same few supplies or doing the same few techniques or enjoying the same styles for a longer than a certain amount of time. You know, we're not gonna be doing the same thing and liking the same thing our entire lives. You know, we're doing art for a long time and every day we are learning new things and we are we are getting new influences and we are seeing new things around us and being inspired by different things. And so don't be afraid of not liking something anymore, of not liking an artist anymore, of not liking a medium anymore. And don't be afraid of trying those new things that you're introduced to um, and trying new styles because that's, I mean, imagine if, imagine, imagine if we turned 18 and that was the exact person we were for the rest of our lives. Yikes. I would, that would, be, that would suck. And that's the same thing as, you know, art. You, you change and you grow and you develop. And I think that's super, super important to be open to those kinds of things. Even if it's a little scary, even if you just spent $200 on some art supply and now you don't want to use it anymore, you will eventually. It's oh, still, yeah. it'll still be there. And I think, I think that's a, a huge thing is not being, and like trying something like, like needle felting. That's very, very different than any of, you know, the 2D art styles that you enjoy, like, like classical oil painting. That's very, very different. Very different. <laughs> But it still is so important to your development as an artist because it's one, it's introducing you to, you know, 3D arts in this whole different realm that you could be super passionate about and end up being really, really good at and your entire career might move in that direction. And that's not something that you should close the door to. And it's also teaching you about like seeing like form 3D, like every, all art skills are interconnected. Yeah. Every, every medium will affect itself, it, each other. Like you're gonna, you only work in 2D most of the time. And now if you're working in 3D, that could totally change the way that you approach your, you know, your painting style. Oh, yeah. And I think that's something in a lot of classical when it comes to skill development. In a lot of classical art schools, if you go to like an atelier for an example, which like teaches you like a very like classical realist method of creating work, um, they will start you off with sculpting portraits to give you a distinct understanding right. of the 3D planes of the face and how like form interacts with volume and light and it's a very practical hands-on application by its very nature yes. and that's how they train you to paint and draw faces a lot of the time it's like a fundamental section of the experience of the education of the curriculum and it's very necessary I think it really teaches you really interesting things about how form works, how to sculpt various parts of the face, and that knowledge will translate mm -hmm. when you go back to 2D mediums. So 
everything is very interconnected. I think that's why it's so cool yes. to experiment because you'll be able to take the knowledge that you gain in one medium and transfer that to another one. And back to sort of going through phases and stuff, I always, I mm-hmm. always regret getting rid of art supplies. <laughs> always, oh always. Then I always have the moment yeah. where I'm like, wait, but now I have to spend that money all over again and go buy that thing that I'm now once again interested in. Like, for example, yeah. um, in high school, I was super interested in watercolor. I like did watercolor all of the time. I got really passionate about it, and I started to set up this palette of Daniel Smith half pans. And I hold, I held on to this palette for like years. And I'm just now getting back into watercolor in my <laughs> sketchbook. And if I had gotten rid of that palette, if I had sold it or given it away, like that's a lot of time. There are some handmade watercolors yeah. in there that I got on Etsy that aren't available anymore, and it's like that's, you know, potentially hundreds of dollars worth of an investment down the drain because watercolor paints are expensive. And it's like a 48 pan palette. That like makes exactly, exactly. And if I hadn't held on to that, I wouldn't have Mm -hmm. the materials ready to do the stuff that I want to do now. And it's not, that's not like an endorsement for hoarding or anything. Like, you know, I was thinking the same thing, (laughs) like, like save and use materials responsibly. (laughs) But yes, maybe have a little bit of foresight into thinking like, could I foreseeably be interested in this again in the future? And think about that. Um, just to make sure that you don't regret giving away anything, especially if it yeah. is very expensive or if you think yeah. that you will not get a return on the investment, like by selling it to somebody, if like that, if the price is lower now, it might be better to hold on to it. I personally, like my personal opinion, again, not to encourage hoarding, <laughs> is that if you have one of some sort of art supply, it does not hurt to hold on to that for your entire life because, I mean, like I said, like we're doing art our yeah. entire lives. There's no telling when you might, when interest might drop off and then might pick up again. And if you have like really nice watercolors and you use them for a long time and you're really passionate and then one day you're like, you know what, I'm never going to use these again. doesn't mean you have to get rid of them because maybe in a few years you'll enjoy them again. My, my great uncle is an artist and um, I have quite a few oil paints, specifically because he gave me his oil paints. And the only reason I'm not mad that he gave them away is because he's really, really old. <laughs> and he, like, can't really use um, use them anymore because, of, like, you know... Arthritis he's and old. stuff, yeah. Arthritis. And, like, that's, that is the only excuse. Like, that is the only really valid reason to get rid of something that you might... Well, that's bold of me to say, but in my head, that's that's the only reason that really makes sense to really like part with yeah. something as an artist. Because as long as you're not like literally like if you have a room full of art supplies, maybe you don't need that much. But if you have a watercolor pan and you know a few tubes of oil paint, it doesn't hurt to keep them around just exactly. in case. Art supplies are and expensive. And a lot of times you can combine art materials in a project. Like you can use gouache, colored pencils, watercolor in a mixed media yeah. approach the same way that you can use acrylic paints as an underpainting for oils and it's actually a completely valid technique to do that and there's like no shame in holding on to stuff you can see it working well right and having some kind of synergy with another material that you have that you do really like and even if i decide like that i hate um needle felting and like making cute little things with wool i'm still glad that i have it and like i'm still like glad that if i you know if i get really tired of oil painting one day i can take this out and still be creative but have a very different experience and I think when it comes to avoiding art block experimentation is actually really vital because you can sometimes get really sick and tired of doing one specific thing and it's still good to be creative I still have that that itch that creative itch to create something when I have art block but Mm -hmm. the thought of taking out my oil paints just like sends me in a tailspin like no thank you I don't want to do that I get really exhausted just thinking about it but something completely different like needle felting or clay or like pottery could actually be the answer to curing that art block that you're really struggling with yeah for sure i think i think experimentation and just being open to different art supplies is really the it's the answer to a lot of issues when it comes to art you know development art block because like yeah like having you still if you are a creative person if you're so creative that your career is creation uh, then yeah, you're like con- you constantly have that itch. Even when I'm like not at all interested in art, there's still that side of me that's like, well, maybe I can like braid one of these bracelets. Like there, there's still that desire to just like do something with my hands and create something. And I think it's so important to even just for your own art health and like art dealing with art block and stuff like that, having something outside of your main art interest. Like I would consider my main art interest to be like markers, like maybe gouache. 
but having things that I like to do outside of those, like even just like sketching, I feel like it's so important to flex those creative muscles without having to do something that feels like work yeah and feels like art and it's something that's so low pressure i think it's just so important i think it's so important for you to experiment and dabble in a bunch of different things not only because it keeps you out of being pigeonholed and it keeps you from a niche it you know it's helping develop all of your art skills and think about things differently it's keeping you you know mentally creative without being exhausting i I just think it's so important to be open because that's, I think that's really is the key to developing skill is just trying new things as an artist, being open to a lot of different things. Yeah, and especially when you bring money into it. Like if you become a professional oil painter, <laughs> you might find that oil painting loses a little bit of joy for you because now it's attached to work and money and the stress of having to pay your bills. And you might find that like clay or gouache or watercolor, like that kind of personal work that you don't sell that's just for you is actually really helpful for maintaining longevity in your career and still a good way for you to have fun with creating. But you might find that when you try to oil paint just for your own personal enjoyment, it doesn't have the same feel to it anymore. So you might want to try developing skills in a different, in a different, in a different medium to sort of get that joy back. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. I, I totally agree. It definitely helps. Yeah. Like art health just kind of the mental compartmentalization that you do having just different things to like dabble in definitely helps with that I think one example for me is um, like collaging it's something that I loved in like middle school and high school was just not really the collaging part just like going through like cutting stuff out of magazines that I liked and I would put it up all over my walls and from there when I ran out of space on my walls I would like collage with it and even now like it's great for like filler in my sketchbook when i really want to create but i just do not have the mental energy to do something high effort or good and like the i it's so easy to still be creating something still feeling productive and getting a page done in my sketchbook and you know flexing those muscles to just like go through magazines and clip out things that i like and take them in in a way that makes my brain happy yes. and like boom like I've, I've done like a piece of art and is it good no do I know what I did no like it doesn't mean anything it's not good but it's something that I did and it, and it made me happy and it's still creative and I'm still even if even if I do like dumb collages every day that's still something that I'm learning every day and slowly you, you know the collages will get better and I think that's like for me that's like a really like prime example of like just a like a random side hobby as an artist that I have that is not at all something that I consider art that I do, but is still objectively art that I'm doing, but it doesn't feel that way. And it's, I like it. I think it's yeah. a good example of something to like a little side hobby like, to have. Do stuff that makes you feel good. This is, this is a good yeah. approach to life. <laughs> Especially like when you're trying <laughs> to pursue a really high stress career as a creative, like having mm. that means of relaxation, but still being creative is really important. And there are some really amazing collage creators here on YouTube, like Art with M. If you're watching this, yeah, oh my, I love you. <laughs> Please be my same. friend. Same. Those collages talk Chef's about making kiss. your brain happy. So, so satisfying. So satisfying. Chef's Have you seen the recent video where she like made like a whole little like like children's book, um, like for a for a school project. Of like the um, oh I don't, mm-hmm. I don't remember what the plot was about but it was like the sky was involved and like all these like really cool like like cloud things going on it was it was incredible we will link M's channel down in the description if you're interested in watching this it will yes. be on the YouTube channel um, in the description of this YouTube video but if you're listening on Spotify yes. I, I, maybe in the show notes I don't know what to do um, <laughs> we're, we're new at this this is episode two give us give us a little bit of patience we'll a little bit of grace <laughs> we're working through it um, but art with yes. M great youtube channel amazing collages and just like Mm -hmm. like doing new things and like having stuff that's just for you is so so important and speaking of stuff that is like just for you and stuff that you're just doing for fun um let's talk a little bit about our latest hyper fixations shall we yes so brain brain satisfying scratching set uh oh my god hyper fixations stuff that makes your inner lizard brain go burr um like mine just did exactly it it's 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 like the mushroom that i made it's like squishy and it has texture to it and i stab it a bunch of times the sharp needle so it's not only like very satisfying to hold and touch but it's also a great way to get like latent murderous energy out of my system like if the video doesn't perform very well 
I guess I better stab the YouTube algorithm in the form <laughs> of this little wool mushroom repeatedly. Um, and it's just... It sounds it's, so fun. Those videos of people doing it, just it looks so fun and satisfying. It's kind of crazy how it works. Like, I don't under... Mm-hmm. Like, it's kind of, kind of crazy. I watched someone make an incredibly hyper-realistic cat with needle felting. I was blown away. I was like, I could never do something like that. I'm, I'm still, I'm still in the beginner stages of making cute little mushrooms. Um, but like, yeah, it's just for fun. It's just for fun. And sometimes I get like this little worm in my brain when it comes to materials of like, I, I need to try that. I need to have that experience of right. doing that oh, thing. Yeah. And if I don't, I might die. <laughs> like I just, I need I get that. to do I get it. That. Um, and that's sort of, yeah. That's, that's the that's the origin story, I guess. Well, you did a great job, and I'm glad you're enjoying it because that's like that's just it sucks when you try those things and you're like, eh, yeah, I didn't like. It. I'm glad I you're enjoying it. I had that experience with acrylics recently. I got some golden acrylics and did not end up panning out. Um, but yeah, so what is what is your latest hyperfixation? My latest hyperfixation. I have a few soft ones. There's nothing that's really really got got me right now but i've been i mentioned earlier i have not been using markers for a long time i was just not really reaching for them lately i've been really into markers again i don't know what it is but like every page in my sketchbook i'm like what can i do with markers i want to do a marker piece i've i've really fallen back in love with them and i've just been having so much fun with markers i really have and it's it's been a nice i haven't really been interested in any other art supply i'm in a bit of an art lull right now and markers are just the only thing that like every day I'm like, oh, I want, I want to touch the markers. I want to touch them. I want to play with them. I want to sort them. I want to organize the colors. I'm really into markers right now. And outside of that, I, my philosophy when it comes to art block is, which I wouldn't consider myself in an art block right now, just not really interested, is sometimes, you know, your body is like, take a break, take a break, stop it. And that's kind of where I'm at right now. And so when I, when I feel like that, I, I do not push myself to do any sort of art that I don't want to do. And... So one of the things that I've been really into right now is like nature and like being outside and especially because summer is kind of in Florida, summer is kind of starting. We've been getting like our our rainstorms are coming and I've been loving it. I've been eating a lot of fresh fruits and vegetable, going on bike rides, been outside in nature, getting that vitamin D. I had my first beach day. I'm like, it's, I'm, (laughs) it's something. I've been loving it. I've been loving like just nature and like being outdoors and I, 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 would, I don't know if I would consider that a hyperfixation, but that's just, like, all I've been thinking about lately is, like, I can't wait to go outside. I want to go to parks. I want to go to the beach. I want to go on a walk. And it has just been so nice. It has been so nice to feel like a person after... Even even though I live in Florida, the, the winter... I don't get seasonal depression nearly as bad as I used to, but there's still that weird, like, just stay inside, don't do anything yeah. kind of feeling. And having that lifted... It feels like I'm born again. <laughs> yeah, the elevator still don't work in my building, so I definitely feel you. Like, I have stopped feeling like a person. Days no longer have any meaning. I wish I could show you guys yeah. what's outside my window right now because it's so cloudy, it's just a sheet of white. I can't see anything out of my yeah, window that's right crazy. now. It's like I live in a void. I'm, like, I, is this even real? <laughs> These are the questions that I, I ask that's, myself. I... <laughs> when I live in a cloud, I ask myself, do I exist anymore? I theoretically, the view being outside your window, being a cloud, just being inside of a cloud, sounds sick. But having to live in that, I don't think I could. I don't think it's I could a do lot it. of. It's most days of the week right now. Okay. Um, for at least a couple hours a day, it's just like you can't see anything. It's just it's just white. It's just white. Um, but yeah, I think that yeah, that all sort of boils down to how important play is in developing skill set. Yes. Like experimentation is, I think, an extension of just like not treating your art super seriously being willing to have fun mm-hmm. experiment rediscover the joy in the process of creating is just so so important i think a lot of art block comes from having really high expectations for your performance of your art and being willing to play yes. and to experiment breaks that expectation and allows you to have fun absolutely and sometimes have really really vital important creative breakthroughs yeah my, my philosophy um, is that, like, if, if you are an artist, if you, and not to say that, you know, what makes an artist real or if you're, if you're a real artist or not, but if you are an artist to your core, you will always come back to art. Even if you go for years without really finding the motivation or the inspiration, you will always come back to art. And so it doesn't bother me when I have to take a step back because I know once my brain has relaxed, I will 
be fully excited to do art again and, and so it doesn't and it doesn't bother me and the, this play time of me just being able to like relax and like be outside and enjoy that all of it is coming back to my art like even though it is entirely separate I'm not thinking about my art even right now when you said that I was immediately thinking about like all the ways that like going out like seeing the plants that I see I take I take pictures of everything and it eventually I'll either draw it or it'll be incorporated into my art the feelings that I feel like this feeling of happiness and like sunlight and fulfillment it's stuff that is affecting my art and it's stuff that I want to put into my art and like all of that just everything will come back to your art everything and so it's so important to not like you don't need to be so hyper focused on on your art and be so like intent and strict with yourself with your art that play is super important because even that will be benefiting your art without you having to put that mental burden on yourself. Yeah, and I think that that sort of connects to, to like, I have this belief that, like, when I take a break, that is still productive time. Um, Absolutely. Like, I had to take a, after I tried posting three times a week during, like, Vlogmas Day, my little Vlogmas challenge, after posting three times a week for the entire month of December, it was exhausting. Um, it taught me yeah. exactly how long it takes to make a YouTube video, which was informative and useful. And I got a, I got a lot of like views and subscribers and like good performance from the videos that I created during that period. But I was exhausted at the end of it, and I had to take a break, so I took two weeks off. And I just played video games. Uh, I just like did random things in my bullet journal. I started bullet journaling again. I just like did just completely random stuff like with wash, watercolor, oil paint. I just like had fun and I played for a long time and just like did video games. I baked a little bit and all of that was productive time. I was refilling the cup that I had just emptied for the entire past month. Yeah. And when I finished, I came back, I was stronger than ever. I made better videos than I had before. I had better results than I had before. And that never would have been possible if I hadn't taken that break, if I hadn't been willing to put everything on pause and take care of myself. And I think it's important to remember that a creative career and like trying to build an audience it is a marathon. It is not a sprint. And you have to treat yourself carefully and like think about long term you. Like, could posting every day benefit your channel? Sure, maybe. Is that sustainable? Definitely not. <laughs> Right. And I, I think this is kind of a topic for another day because we could definitely have a whole uh, episode about work-life balance. But I think that is a huge part of it is when we are, we are the content and our art is the content and it's all so intermingled, it can feel like, like every day I am working, every second of the day I am working. Like, especially if you're like, now that I'm vlogging monthly, like a lot of times if I'm thinking about like just during my regular day, what should I be filming? Like setting up shots. And it can be really mentally exhausting to feel like every day I have to make art. And on top of like the art for myself that I have to make, I have to make postable art and I have to do commissions and I have to do video art and then I have to like worry about the video and then I have to do this and then I have to do Patreon stuff. And it can feel really, really exhausting. Like eventually, it's because there's no boundary. There's no boundary. If you're working from home and at, at any time of the day, there's there's no hours. I'm, I'm responding to emails at any time of the day and I'm, I'm responding to DMs at any time of the day. There is no boundary. There is no leaving you know, work at work because work is in my bedroom. <laughs> work is, it's around me all the time. It comes with me. It's on my phone. It is all the time. It is everything that I do. And that can be so, so exhausting. And so like having that ability to take a step back and just go enjoy life is going to help your art flourish. So you said you, when you came back, you were more excited than, you know, you were at your best. It is so important to take those breaks and give yourself that break because if you're running on empty, what you're doing is not going to be good. It's just not, it's not gonna be your best work. And so taking that time to let yourself recharge is so vital, it's so vital. It is productive hours, that is that is time that you need to take and it's not wasting time. And speaking of having fun, sort of experimenting and playing with your art and developing your skill set, the two of us have been doing some pretty interesting things, trying to develop our own skills and bring us out and experiment with new mediums too. So Al, do you wanna, do you wanna kick it off? What are you sure. doing? Sure, so lately I've been doing some oil painting which is something that I've tried to do a few times uh, to no avail. <laughs> I've always kind of just gave, given up. Um, I did one in high school at some point and it turned out really, really well. And it, I was so worried it was a fluke um, to do it you know, well for the first time. So I never, I, I didn't touch it again. And I also lost half of my air supplies somehow, like my oil supplies. And then um, in, in doing this and doing my career, I was like, well, I, sh I should try again. I want to like do different things. 
and I think I did a Skillshare class on it, and I did a, the Evolve course, and I've done a few things that were all really helpful, but like was not clicking for me. And then you you reached out to me and you're like, hey, like, do you want help with your oil supplies or with oil painting? Yeah, that was the first DM I ever sent yeah. you. It was like, hey, I saw you did like a little video on oil painting. Like, I'm an oil painter. If you need any advice, like, I'm yeah. here for you. And that was literally how we case started our yeah, friendship. Exactly. And and we like we chatted and you gave me some really good advice. And it was. I think probably the most helpful advice I've gotten just because it was like, I could ask questions and like, I could understand. And I was, yeah. but I was at the point that like, I had so much theoretical knowledge and it was, I, <laughs> I'm writing a video about this right now. And I, I was doing the script and as I was writing the script, I was like, oh my God, I'm a hands-on learner. And it like hit me like, why am I struggling so hard? And I was like, I'm so stupid. I'm a hands-on learner. And so I was getting all this theoretical knowledge and it was helpful in theory like in my brain I was like oh my god I get it and then I would sit down and be like I don't I nothing is working like I don't understand and so I finally decided like what makes the most sense is for me to just like do it just do it and I did and it's first of all it helped me a lot understand my um, my learning process a lot and it was so fun to guess <laughs> it was actually like really fun to just like I knew I was doing stuff wrong I know I did stuff wrong but it was really fun to just like try something new and like trust my you know artistic guts my instinct and and my intuition and it was but also like your painting it turned out amazing i see a picture of it 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 literally blew me away it was so good i'll put a picture of it on the screen right now for those of you watching over on youtube but like like legit so impressive i was like this is your second oil painting ever no, false <laughs> not true thank you Conspiracy. that means that means so much coming from you because you are like i mean you're one of my favorite oil painters um i watching you do it i'm always like how that doesn't even seem like oil like the way you use it it just because oil to me when i watch people use oil it like looks complicated but you make it look really easy so that means so much coming from you thank you yeah thank you but yeah i, I had a lot of fun it was super fun to just like do something like pr it's pretty different like it's very different than any other medium i'm not going to go too much into it because I, yeah. I made a whole video about my experience you know doing doing the oil painting but it was so fun we'll link that in the description yes <laughs> plug it was so fun and it was really really nice to just not really i didn't really care how it ended up because i was like you know it's my first time if it's bad it's bad and it was really fun to just like develop i feel like it clicked i feel like i got oil paints now and just by like just you know taking the jump taking the leap and it was really really fun i keep saying that but it was i can't get over how much i enjoyed i did not think i would like oil paints i thought for sure it just wouldn't be for me and as someone coming from doing a lot of acrylic paintings it was different it took a lot of adjusting um wet on wet is like the appeal to oils but at the same time not knowing how to work wet on wet it was a huge obstacle um but i'm i'm pretty proud of it i'm looking at it right now and um yeah, it was, it was just fun to do something different that, you know, required a whole different part of my brain than anything that I was, you know, used to doing. It was a lot of fun. Yeah. Yeah. And sort of, I guess we both, I guess, tried. Yeah. And I guess we sort of, we both tried things that the yes. other person has more <laughs> experience in with her without realizing it. Because I did 100 mm -hmm. heads. I did the 100 heads challenge. Um, I don't draw heads. I paint like oil landscapes in a vaguely impressionistic kind of style. So anatomy, faces, very much not my forte, very much like not my comfort zone. It was again, sort of going back to like being seen to be bad at something and showing that vulnerable side of yourself is sort of not, not a thing that I really um, do very often, especially when it comes to like anatomy and faces and drawing humans. I think I only have one other video on my channel from ages and ages ago where I did figure drawing for a mm -hmm. little bit, but I have been working through the 100 heads challenge. I'm on 80, I think, so I'm gonna try and finish it up today if I can. Last time, last but, time you told me you were on like 30 yeah. something. That's impressive. Yeah, I knocked out like 15 or something on stream yesterday because mm -hmm. I stream once a week and I'm probably gonna stream after we finish this podcast episode, um, but. Yeah, it was, um, honestly, I've hated it a lot. <laughs> um, it's felt like pulling teeth. It's been absolutely miserable. And I can, like, feel art block creeping in the more that I force right. myself to do it. So that's why I got the needle felting stuff. That's why I've sort of been taking breaks, doing something completely different to still, like, stretch those creative mm -hmm. muscles. But 
work toward my goals at the same time uh, because drawing faces for me is just not not fun right now um, especially when I have to do so many of them right in such a short time frame for like work yeah basically for sure so I have um, absolutely noticed a difference I think like you're you've also noticed a difference with your oil painting skills um, sort of develop yeah. over the course of that process and I've absolutely noticed an impact in my ability to achieve a likeness and do facial anatomy over the course of drawing all of these faces I still think that I'm not like perfect like I, I told you this before, um, but when I draw a face, it looks like a very poor, like, police artist sketch of the reference. Right. Like, maybe their cousin, if you squint really hard and, like, look at it from a distance. <laughs> um, but not not a super good representation of the reference photo. So I'm still working on achieving a likeness. I think I'm better than I was before, but that sort of touches on how important it is. And I have felt like for a long time that like the limiting factor in my artistic ability right now and achieving the look that I want to achieve is drawing. Like my lack of drawing experience, my lack of sort of that fundamental skill and faces and drawing faces is a great way to practice that because we are as humans very, very good at identifying when a face does not look right. Um, and that is like just a thing that we're, we're really right. good at. We can immediately tell when something's off and it takes work to figure out what that thing is that's off and identifying that and improving that. But it's a really great way to like hone in on the flaws in your drawing abilities and make really substantive progress in a short time frame. And sort of that was sort of like the, the goal of this yeah. challenge for myself. And um, yeah, a little bit of regret um, in having such a short, time constraint on it and having to do so many every single day right. but um it's it's definitely been interesting to develop my skill yeah. set for sure yeah there's definitely a huge task load to take on especially for like a kind of a beginner skill in terms of portraiture but i think it's awesome yeah. that you can already like see an improvement and you're, you're talking about like drawing being kind of your weak link what's great about doing portraits is like you said not only is it really easy for our brains to figure out what's wrong it's doing all of that is so good at it's one of the most like detailed things like faces are it's so much yeah. detail and so many different shapes and so much different construction i don't really know a better word for it but when you're when you're like structure of the face there's so many different points of reference and and so it's a great way to learn to draw from reference it's a great way to learn like sketching techniques because there's a lot of shading and there's a lot of light areas and a lot of dark areas and line width and it's so it's i think portraits Sketching portraits is a great way to start kind of in anything that you want to do because it teaches you so much about just the mechanics of drawing and yeah. that muscle memory and, you know, learning to draw like good circles and good lines and, you know, confidence of your strokes. It's, I think it's a great, great place to start, including just, you know, learning to draw from reference because it's so much detail and so much that you have to pack into one little piece um, that anything else, doing anything else from doing a portrait you know, when it comes to reference, like I'll, if I'm mapping out like a landscape, I can map out a landscape, you know, in like three lines because I'm very used to, you know, the confidence of doing a portrait with, with so much detail and minimizing that for me to understand as a sketch. Um, and I, and I think it just translates to everything really, really well. So I think it's an awesome thing to be learning because it'll benefit you so much in, in every area. So that's really cool that. I'm, oh yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I'm really excited to like do this challenge and then take like a week where I don't touch yeah. portrait drawing at all and do landscapes instead and trying to see if there's like a difference that I can note there given my previous experience in in sort of that subject right. matter so it's, it's interesting and sort of the like what we were talking about earlier like everything always converges like everything is interconnected when it comes to artistic skill set if you develop one area it will benefit you in other areas yeah. and there is sort of no like thing that exists just in a vacuum when it comes to skill set everything will always touch other stuff so that's again why it's really important to just have fun playing and experimenting and just having a good time yeah for sure yeah i it's it's so weird how i mean quite literally everything when you're living an artistic life how quite literally everything is interconnected and i feel like i noticed that with the oil painting with seeing how like pretty much every little thing I did, I was relating it to something else in my art career. Like I feel like every breaststroke yeah. was, or it was even 
like relating it to things that I had like seen. Like if I held my brush a certain way, I would automatically think of like some other person's video that I watched where they held the brush this way and me thinking like, well, how, like, what does this work? And I think it's really cool how like, even just watching YouTube videos, watching this podcast, like listening to this podcast, it's gonna be, you're gonna learn something from it. And it's not, you know, how nothing is a waste of time when it comes to art. Everything is gonna come back to your art. I feel like that's a really unique thing about having an artistic career is that everything is gonna benefit you even like going on a walk is gonna be, you know, some spark of inspiration. And I don't think like, I don't think an accountant can really say the same thing about, you know, their personal life, how it's gonna, you know, greatly impact in th their career. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, like, when your art is like, when you have the identity of being an artist, everything will always link back yeah. to that identity. Art is more than just like a job or a hobby. It's part of who you are. It's part of how you express yourself. It's an innate part of your personality. Even if you don't touch any of your art materials for like years, when you come back to it, you'll still have that foundational knowledge there and you'll still be able to like sort of experience that life as an artist. It will never be just like a phase, I guess. Right. Like you'll always carry that with you. Um, and I think that's really cool and really special and a really like interesting part of the human experience and yeah. what it is like to just like live yeah for sure i this is a little slightly going back to what you're saying i do have a question for you so if you if you didn't if sketching is your weak link and you do a lot of painting where did you like i feel like when i started with art it was like doodling in my class notes and like starting with like pencil sketches so where did you really like start with art I also started with like drawing and pencil sketches and stuff. I just, as soon as I touched painting, mm -hmm. I stopped doing everything <laughs> else. Um, I feel like you might have mentioned this to me. So yeah. like when I discovered, like I used to do, um, before I touched oil painting, I did a lot of abstract acrylic mm -hmm. work, like acrylic pouring, for example. I can put like some photos of my pieces on the screen right now for those watching on YouTube, but it was like very, very abstract. It taught me a lot about like, color theory and composition more than it ever did about sort of line and form. Um, and then when I took that oil painting class, I was sculpting more than I was drawing, I think, with the right. paint. Um, so that's sort of like, is kind of how I fell into the situation where I stopped prioritizing drawing. Yeah. And I find painting much more fun, much more pleasant. And I did take a drawing class my last semester of college, mm -hmm. and um, I found that okay. I liked charcoal and sort of the additive and subtractive properties of charcoal and like white chalk together yeah. to be the perfect combination for me because it felt more like painting right, than just sure. graphite sketches. Um, so I really enjoyed that, and I think I've definitely found a newfound appreciation for graphite and I have been having fun with being a little more expressive, a little more stylized yeah. while still achieving a likeness and still like talking about anatomy and like practicing and everything. But, um, but yeah, I just, I don't know. I just enjoy painting so much yeah. more. And as soon as I stopped doing drawing and sketching and stuff and I sort of stopped being good at people, I stopped being interested in that. I started doing like landscapes and stuff. I, um, just like really focused in on it. It became sort of a hyper fixation like we talked about earlier, which is like the thing that I was doing constantly. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, you mentioned um, like you stopped doing it and that's how you kind of got to the point of it being a weak point. I think that's kind of, I think that's a, a great um, overall connector to the entire topic of like the importance of not letting yourself get stuck in a niche because those things will weaken and how those things that are a weak skill right now might be something that greatly benefit your overall art experience and I, I definitely have experienced that where like I will like one thing that I really wanted to get better at when I started my account my Instagram account was cartoonish stylized comic type art which is not what I do at all now like yeah. you, I don't think anyone would really guess that it's kind of surprising like yeah. hearing that from you because it's just so not what you yeah do. exactly the algorithm definitely led me down a very very different path and I will constantly try to develop that that side of me that side of me as an artist and I will constantly hit this roadblock of being like oh my god I'm just not good at it I'm just not good at it but it's not that it's that I never actually practiced because the algorithm 
told me that no one liked those posts and so I didn't do them that often and it's something that yeah. if I had stuck with it I could be really good at right now because it's years later and I could have really developed that skill but I didn't and so now it's a weak point for me and I really I really wish it wasn't because I would love to doodle those for fun I would love to do that for fun but instead it's work because I'm not satisfied with it every time I do it it's like hard and I think it looks bad and I think that's a great point of like just the importance of being able to do things that are different like being being open to those doing different things that either the algorithm tells you isn't worth it or you know they're not as fun as other things being able to put some level of effort into a lot of different things as an artist it'll benefit you overall and I think that's something that I'm constantly trying to remind myself is just because like I don't enjoy doing digital all the time I should still try to do digital because there are times that I want to do digital but I can't do it well because I don't practice digital do you know what I mean I think it's important yeah to I think develop skills the more well-rounded you are like the more that you'll be comfortable doing everything exactly and that sort of those skill sets will have compounding effects and will trickle down to everything else that you're doing, including the stuff that you're really passionate yeah. about. So yeah, practice everything, yes. practice anything, yeah. have fun, play, experiment, and you'll be so much better as an artist yeah. as a result. So as we wind down this episode, um, just want to thank you guys so much for listening. There will be a blooper reel at the very, very end. So if you have listened all the way... You get a little reward. <laughs> you'll get a little reward and tell us what your favorite blooper was for this episode, because they're, they're pretty funny. Um, I do want to give a quick shout-out to a commenter. So this is going to be a recurring segment occasionally in the podcast episodes where we shout-out someone who left a really great comment. And for the first comment highlight, I want to shout-out to Scott. Scott was the first commenter yeah. ever on the channel. Uh, they will be in the Hall of Fame for all eternity. Mm -hmm. So congrats to Scott. Go check out his channel. He does some really great oil painting content. I've really enjoyed some of his stuff. He recently did a video where he did an entire oil painting on the back of a laptop screen, which is crazy. crazy. Impressive. Like I just never even thought that was no. possible. Um, and yeah, if you're listening to us on Apple Podcasts, Spotify Podcasts, or wherever you get your podcasts, um, give us a little bit of a rating. Uh, rate us five stars. Just for five. Just maybe do that. Maybe. Just, yeah, just an idea. It'll, it's like a fun and, thing to uh, do. <laughs> yeah, it's just, you know, it's a it's a, it's a fun little hobby, you know, go and race on every single yeah. platform, just a little, a little side quest little, for you. you know. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and uh, yeah, that's sort of all that we have for yeah. you guys, and we'll see you in the next one. Bye, everybody. Hi there, and welcome to the second episode of the Make Art, Don't Starve podcast. I'm your host, Kelsey. And I'm... <laughs> No, okay, really? <laughs> I I was gonna be like, and I'm Kelsey. <laughs> we're professionals. Okay, fine. <laughs> oh yeah, we're really good at this. We should put that in the. We should have like a little like outtake section, like a, like a bloopers at the very end. I'm, yeah, I'm okay with being a public moron. That's fine with okay. me. <laughs> Love that for you. Hi there, and welcome to the second episode of the Make Art. Wait, sorry, I, sorry, I breathed out just as you started last time. Okay. Okay. <laughs>